Hey, what's up you guys? Welcome back or if it's your first time here, welcome. I really hope you enjoyed today's video as well as my channel. Definitely do not forget to hit that subscribe button if you do. So for today's video, we are going to be doing another five best and five worst. I have been doing a lot of research for this particular five best and five worst because we are talking all about powders, especially powders for dry skin. You guys know how much I love me, my RCMA no color powder. And for a while, it was literally the only powder that I was using because it was the only powder powder that really worked for my very dry skin. I have had lots of powders that have just made me look like a really cakey, dry desert mess. And honestly, once you find that like one holy grail, it's really hard to try anything else. So I made it my mission to try out as many powders as I possibly could to find some really great ones for dry skin. And honestly, I found some really awesome ones. And of course, I also have five other powders that also really didn't work out for me. So I will be going through those as well. So I really hope that you guys enjoy today's video and find it helpful. Definitely do do not forget to let me know what your favorite powders are in the comments. Give this video a big thumbs up if you love the five best and five worst series. And of course, subscribe if you're not subscribed already. So without further ado, let's begin. As always, I like to start off on a positive note. So I'm gonna first start off with my five favorite powders. Now, I basically already mentioned this in the intro, so I'm just going to get it out of the way. And you guys know what I'm gonna say. It is the RCMA No Color Powder. Now, this was the powder that basically showed me that I could actually wear powder because for the longest time, I never set my makeup. I was convinced that every single powder out there would just accentuate all the dryness on my skin and would just make my skin look terrible. So this was the first powder, honestly, that I ever tried that truly made the biggest difference in the way that my skin looked when applying powder. This is just a powder with no frills. It comes in this really ugly packaging. It looks like a salt shaker. It is a no color powder. So you can apply this underneath your eyes to set your concealer and it's not going to lighten or darken your concealer. You could even use this to set like cream contour and it's not going to alter the color which is one of the main reasons why I really, really love this because it is so versatile and it can really be used throughout the whole entire face. And if you're into baking, this is a really great baking powder as well. Overall, it's just a powder that does what it needs to do. So that is why the RCMA powder is like right at the top of the list and it always will be has a special place in my heart. Another one of my favorite powders is actually more of a recent find. And honestly, I'm wondering why it took me so long to try this out. This is the Charlotte Tilbury Airblush Flawless Finish Skin Perfecting Micro Powder. This powder is so beautiful. And honestly, I almost like it more than the RCMA powder, which sort of blows my mind. Never thought I would ever say that. Now this powder obviously differs quite a bit from the RCMA no color powder because it is pressed and it also has a little bit of like a tint to it. Now Charlotte Tilbury does have a few other shades. This one is number one fair, which is the lightest shade. And the reason why I like this shade in particular is because I am able to actually use it not only to set my whole face, but also to set my under eyes. Because even though this has a tint to it, the tint isn't so strong that it doesn't make my under eyes look darker. Now there are two other reasons why I really love this product. Firstly, I really like that when I put it all over my face, it doesn't totally mattify my skin. It still allows some glow to show through, which is really important, especially for somebody who does have dry skin. I don't typically want to look matte. I do want to have a little bit of like a sheen to my skin because that's just what I prefer. And this powder, even though it takes away like the majority of the shine, especially if I use like more of like a glowy foundation, it allows just like the right amount of glow and shine to come through, which I love. And another reason why this is so great is the fact that it looks completely invisible when you apply it to your skin. You could like pack this product on and you still will not see it. Because the texture is so lightweight and finely milled and when you touch it, like not a lot of powder actually comes off. This type of texture is also so ideal to set your under eye concealer because it will not cake up or look too heavy. This one I honestly could not recommend more. So next, moving on to the RMS Beauty Unpowder. Now, when I bought this off of Sephora, the description of the product really intrigued me because it described itself as a powder that is completely undetectable. And honestly, <laughs> that's all a powder needs to say to sell me and I bought it that second. At first, I was a little bit on the fence with this product. I wasn't really sure if I loved it or if I was just like sort of meh about it. But honestly, the more that I use it, the more I really, really love it. Now, this is probably one of the most like finely milled loose powders I've ever tried. It's so strange because when you touch it, it almost like 
disappears in your hands. It, it just totally absorbs so quickly. And because of that quality, just like the Charlotte Tilbury powder, I find that it looks almost completely invisible on the skin. And I also find that this powder specifically makes me look almost poreless. And I actually prefer to apply the product with the puff that comes with it. So what I do is I just shake out some of the product, I put the puff in the product, and then I almost like massage and roll the powder into my skin. And I find that it applies the best way like this. Now, to be honest with you, I actually don't like applying this underneath my eyes. I just don't really find that it works very well, but I do love applying this all over the rest of my face. Another powder that I just think is so amazing for dry skin is this Hourglass Ambient Lighting Powder in the shade Dim Light. So this isn't like your typical setting powder. It's not translucent. It's not even just tinted. This powder actually has a little bit of a sheen to it, which is why I like it. So if I'm having like a day where my skin is feeling extra dry, but I still feel like I actually need to set my foundation, then I will always go in with this powder because it does have a little bit of a sheen to it. It adds a little bit of glow to my skin, even though I am setting with powder, which is almost like an oxymoron. It doesn't even make sense, but it does. The texture of the powder is really very unique, I feel like, to the ambient lighting powders. When you actually touch the powder, it is so like smooth that it almost feels creamy it just disappears into the skin without you even knowing that it's there and that's why I love it so I actually have one more powder that I want to mention just as sort of like an honorable mention only because I bought this really recently for the three times that I have used it I've been really impressed and it is the bare minerals bare pro performance wear powder foundation in dawn 02 now this is actually not even supposed to be like a setting powder it's more so supposed to be like a pressed powder foundation but I use it as a setting powder and it works so well even though I've only used this powder like three times I've been so impressed with it because it has honestly just made my skin look even even better whenever I apply it. I find that this is another powder that really just makes my skin look so airbrushed and flawless and poreless. And it also is another powder that will um, set my makeup but not totally mattify me. And it looks so nice and natural on the skin. So yeah, that's the Bare Minerals Bare Pro Powder. So now that we've spoken about all of my favorite powders, it's time for me to talk about all of my least favorite powders. I just wanna say that if I dislike a product that you love, that is totally okay because what works for me may not work for you and vice versa. So I just want you guys to take my opinion with a grain of salt. And these are products that basically just didn't work for my specific skin type. And that's that. Now this powder may cause a little bit of a controversy because this has been such a hyped up product for the longest time. And honestly, I tried to love it but I really couldn't. It is the Laura Mercier Translucent Powder. I know, I know, I can't even believe it either that I didn't like this because so many people were going crazy over this and I thought that I was crazy that I didn't like it. Now, the reason why I don't like this product is because it attached to all of my dry patches. It made my skin look so dry, look so cakey, I can never make it work. I tried to bake with it, I tried to set with it, I tried to set my under eyes with it. Really nothing worked with this powder for my skin. It just like rejected it and that's why I don't like it. Really not much else to say about it. It just made my skin really look horrible now this next powder I actually had really really high hopes for and I was using it a ton trying to make it work this is the Kat Von D locket setting powder and translucent and it is the loose one this powder is another loose powder that just made my skin look so dry and like almost cracked like every time I would use it it would look like I applied so much more makeup than I actually did and that was the really unfortunate part of it it just didn't really do anything good for my skin and it's funny because I know some girls who do have dry skin who do really really like this powder but for some reason it just didn't really work for me now this next product is actually something that I think I've mentioned to other products I don't like videos which I think is pretty funny because it just keeps on popping up so this is the Bobbi Brown nude finish illuminating powder so this is basically supposed to be a powder that is supposed to also give your skin a little bit of a glow so a sales associate at Sephora actually recommended this product to me she said that she absolutely loved it so I took her recommendation and I bought the product this powder is honestly so confusing because when you look at it it has extremely visible shimmer in it like chunky 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 bits of shimmer so so it's not even like it has a sheen like the hourglass powder that actually makes your skin have that really beautiful glow to it no 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 it's just like pure 
glitter, which is so weird, especially for a finishing powder or a setting powder. It translates on the face and it just looks very, very weird. And not only that, but the texture of it just really didn't work for my skin. It also made it look so dry and so cakey. Dry skin girls will get me on this. When you look in the mirror really, really close and you can see your foundation and your powder almost like separating and cracking, this did it to me. So another powder that really just didn't work out for me is this NARS Translucent Crystal Light Reflecting Setting Powder Impressed. Now I've actually heard that the loose version of this is really fantastic. Now this is like the strangest powder ever because I could rub my finger on this for the longest time and the smallest amount of powder will come off. Like you can barely, barely even see it. And that's me rubbing it with my finger. So when I go in with a soft bristled brush, it literally doesn't even pick up any powder. Like I actually thought there was something wrong with it, but I I remember going to Sephora and talking to another sales associate and she said that a lot of people come back with the same complaints that this powder just really doesn't release a lot of product onto like a brush and that is really my main problem with this so it's not even like it made my skin look crappy it didn't even really have a chance to make my skin look like anything because i wasn't even able to get it on my face so now we have made it to the end this is the last of my least favorite setting powders this is from tarte and it is the smooth operator amazonian clay tinted pressed finishing powder in light now i bought this actually to test out before doing my best of tarte video because i'd actually never tried this and really haven't heard too many people talk about it so i was like ooh, what if this product is gonna be like a hidden gem this was just another powder that just looked terrible on my skin like it was another one of those products that totally broke up onto my skin and it looked like I had like mini craters of like foundation and powder all over my skin it just made it look so textured that's all I need to see for me to not like a powder and this really really did that to me really badly at first I actually thought it was my primer that I used so I took off all of my makeup just used a moisturizer not a primer put on the foundation that I typically wear and then again I set it with this powder and it did the exact same thing so I know for sure that it was the powder that just made my skin look 15 years older. So that is it for all of my favorite powders and all of my least favorite powders for dry skin. I really hope that you guys enjoy this video. Definitely let me know what you thought in the comments. Let me know some of your favorite powders, some powders that did not work out for you. Would love to hear all of your thoughts. Of course, give this video a big thumbs up if you enjoy best and worst videos and subscribe if you're not subscribed already. And I will see you guys next time. Bye.